When I was 12 years old, one of my friends and I were on a social media site. We were talking to kids whom we thought were our age, and one of the boys told us to flash our chest, and us being naive, we did it for about two seconds. About six months later, I got a random message telling me that he had a picture of me, and that if I didn't do what he told me to do, he was gonna send that picture to all my friends. And that's when reality kind of set in. If I didn't do what he told me to do, then my life was gonna be ruined. He instructed me to go to a video chat site. He wanted me to take off all my clothes. He kept me on this video chat posing for about six hours, and I told him, you know, I feel really disgusted because no one's ever seen me like that ever. I haven't even had my first kiss yet. This is happening more often than anyone might realize. Thorn is a nonprofit created to stop online sexual abuse. Their CEO, Julie Cordua, joins us now. And you started researching this concept of sextortion, which a lot of people have never even heard of until today. What did you find when you started looking into these things going on out there? We understood that it was a hidden crime, but we wanted to really understand how hidden it was. And when we did this research, we expected a few hundred people to tell us their stories. And we actually got over 1,500 people to tell us their stories, and a third of them had never told anyone. So them filling out this survey and writing their story was really the first time that they were reaching out for help. Um, and then from these stories, we also learned that the threat is real. Nearly 50% of the perpetrators in these cases actually carried out their threats. If you're a parent, how can you potentially protect your child from this ever happening? Yeah, well, there's some first initial easy steps. One, if you are putting a device in your child's hand or it's in your house and it's connected to the internet, have a conversation with your child. It's gonna be uncomfortable, but talk to them openly. And then two, um, be calm and create an environment where if something happens, your child will come to you. Sure, you are going to tell your child, don't send naked pictures, and you're going to say that over and over. If they do, they need to know that they can come to you and ask for help. It seems like a new smartphone app is popping up every single day, making a parent's job of monitoring kids' online safety even harder. So here to show us how to be a mom tector clinical psychologist and attorney, Dr. Lisa Stroman. So the first tip I would say is to understand that there's something called vault apps or calculator apps that are out there. We should all know that these are apps that you can download on your phone that literally keep us um, all of our like digital stuff, our pictures and our videos. They even have browsing capabilities behind it. So if, if, as a parent, if I have a monitoring tool on my phone, you actually cannot see what they're browsing and doing online. So it looks like a calculator. Absolutely looks like a calculator. And in fact, if you as a parent go in and start to use it, and it's actually one of these calculator apps, and you punch in the wrong code, it will secretly take your picture and notify the child. And I mean, it's yeah. on your kid. Yes. So then behind this app, they're hiding photos. They're able to browse without you knowing what they're looking at. And you can't detect it even if you have that, that software on your own. No, it, it does not. It actually cl it, it cloaks what's in, inside of that. And what is terrifying to me is that the average age children now are viewing pornography is eight, and chronic viewing is 11. That's so they're average, hiding So those. that means younger, yes. too. So they're hiding these within those apps. The next one, uh, to me, is equally difficult to, to appreciate, I think, as a parent, because kids think it's so fun, but it's live streaming apps. And so kids are getting bored and they're doing things and so they basically can go online and typically behind the closed door of their bedrooms or bathroom, they just turn on this live stream and they start talking to the world. But the new part of these live stream apps is that they actually are also giving digital currencies to these kids. And so you can gift someone these digital currencies with peace balloons or diamonds and those are convertible over into PayPal and these kids are making money. And so, so what do they have hmm. to do to earn the money? Like what, so, what kind of tasks? Great question. Um, a lot of times, uh, on, on most of the live streaming apps, there's a, there's a live chat screen that's on there. And on that chat screen, they're directed to do certain things. And as you can imagine, you can have a young child on there who says, you're pretty, you're cute, could you do this? I'll give you a peace balloon. And so it's turning into, to me, kind of a digital strip platform for these kids yeah. making money. Whoa. And, and so this is being funded by the other person, whoever wants you to do the task. So a lot of times, it's probably some type of predator who has the financial <laughs> means to pay these kids. Absolutely. 
certainly adults. Yes. And that's, that goes back to as a parent, like we have to look at what are our kids downloading off the app store? Lock that down. Our kids don't have the brain development at those ages that are they're getting their first cell phone. In the United States, first technology device for a kid is now six. Cyberbullying is unfortunately a term we've become all too familiar with, but this next internet danger is one you probably haven't heard of yet. Parents want to protect their kids from online predators, but what happens when they're cyberbullying themselves? It may sound hard to believe, but self-cyberbullying is a tragic new trend, where teens anonymously post mean things about themselves to gain attention and sympathy from the online community. According to the Cyberbullying Research Center, about 6% of kids ages 12 through 17 have bullied themselves digitally, and recent stats show that those most at risk are depressed girls. So how damaging is this form of self-cyberbullying? So very disturbing, but uh, Dr. Judy, you say self-cyberbullying is a legit trend, sadly growing trend. Sadly growing trend, sadly legit trend. I've actually treated many patients with this and they use fake aliases online to bully themselves. So they will make comments on their own pictures about you're not worthy of being alive. You're so ugly, why don't you just go and cut your face? But these comments are coming from the individual themselves and that's what's really scary is that that still contributes even more to their low self-esteem. It makes them want to even attempt suicide or other types well, absolutely. of- Absolutely, and that whole phrase of what the mind conceives the body achieves is usually used to motivate, like you know, for a good athletic event or giving a great speech or something. But it's also true in the negative sphere. So what the mind conceives, the body achieves, you're fat, you're ugly, you're not worthy. The suicide rate, listen to this stat, it's astounding. Amongst girls between 12 and 17 years old, doubled between 2007 wow. and 2015. What happened there? Right. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Absolutely. Instagram. That's what happened right. right there. Nothing else changed. Absolutely, and I think sometimes when I talk to these patients, I, I talk to them about why they would do this. And of course, yes, the low self-esteem, they don't actually think they deserve better, but also it's almost as a way to protect themselves preemptively. Like if they say something mm. horrible about their own posts, then if somebody it else- It won't hurt it, if exactly. somebody else does it. They beat them to the punch. This is a cry for help just yes. as physical abuse. So Dr. Judy, tell us as parents, I have three eight-year-old boys, mm. how do I watch out for this kind of behavior since there's no visible cut. Sometimes parents are a little shy about intruding on their kid. I don't wanna intrude on my child. Well, you know what? They're under 18, they live in your house. It is your responsibility to monitor them. We know for sure that parental monitoring is the one biggest factor in promoting good outcomes in your children. Reducing substance abuse, encouraging good grades, pro-social friendships, all of these things. And so as a child, you can't make those decisions for yourself. So your parents, if they're going to give you access to social media, they need to have that discussion with you and they need to ac have access to your passwords. As parents, you need to be up on the new social media content because there's a new app coming out every day. So you have to be familiar with that.